Christina Radish with Collider. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? I am very well. Excellent work on this. I was thoroughly impressed with everything you did and completely like, I just could not stop watching the story. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. When we've spoken in the past, you've told me that even when the stories you're telling are dark and the characters are tortured, you actually have fun. So what did you most enjoy about this experience? What what was the most satisfying aspect of taking all of this on? I think the most satisfying aspect of this particular show, because you're right, I do always enjoy that part of it, was working with these uh, actors and the the two directors as well, Michelle McLaren and Dana Reed, because there were just the three of us directing the show. We were very collaborative. We were very closely linked. We had to work together a lot on the episodes because something that one director would do would affect what I was doing four episodes later. And so there was a lot of back channeling, a lot of conversation between us of like how we were going to construct the show as a whole. And so that was really fun. And then the actors, not only getting to act with them, but getting to direct them, Wagner, Pippa, you know, Chris Chalk, like, um, just the Jamie, obviously, oh my God, who's like so incredibly talented. So getting to work with them was probably the most rewarding thing. And I think each of them turns in one of the best performances they've ever done in this show. Um, and they all kind of do something different that they've never really done before. So it was really fascinating to see them explore that and challenge themselves. You've also said that you always try to pull from your own life when you play a character, even if you don't have a direct parallel to draw from. So what was it that first connected you to Kirby? What was that first thing that you found yourself connecting to? And how did that help you build the character out from there? Well, that was actually the hard thing about this one, because there wasn't really anything I could pull from of my own life. Yeah. I have not had experienced or 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 know anyone who has experienced their whole world changing all the time. You know, somebody who's experienced trauma I've played, but I've never had that. So that was a new kind of challenge for me that I really, really liked was how do I play somebody whose world is shifting around them and they are kind of used to it. They know what's happening, but they don't know why. And there was no reference point for that. There was no, I couldn't go talk to anybody about that. I was nothing in my own life that I could I could equate that with, you know. So that was a kind of um, what I liked about this was actually the fact that I couldn't do that. I, you know, I had to in really invent it. Every time the present shifts for your character, her hair changes. Sometimes in small ways, and sometimes in major ways. So how did you approach what changes you wanted to make to the character every time her world shifted? Yeah, that was a tricky one because you know. We wanted to make sure things were believable. We needed to make sure that things were um, choices that the character would make. So they couldn't be like, oh, all of a sudden I had like crazy spiky hair or something like that. It had to be like within the world of the character and it had to be grounded as well. Um, and the, but, but we also were trying to find ways in the costume that, that maybe she changed. So it wasn't just the hair ways in the makeup that she changed. So it wasn't, you know, the hair is sort of the most noticeable thing. It's the first thing you see, but that we were also trying to make sure it wasn't just the hair that would change. Um, so it was, it was, it was definitely something that I've never done before. I've never had, you know, I think I have like five different looks in this show. Um, it was a, definitely a certain point while we reached the end of the show when I had my last look that we were like, we're done, right? Like there's no, I remember talking to Silka, the showrunner and being like, there's no other, no others, right? Because I'm out of ideas of what I can do with my hair. Like there's no, there's no other shifts, right? <laughs> she was like, that's it, we're done. There's no other things. <laughs> I, just, I thought it was so brilliant because it does give you a sense that, okay, things are a little different again without you having to explain it every time. Yeah, exactly. And it was a very easily, like easily um, recognizable thing too for the audience. You have also now directed episodes of Handmaid's Tale. Which was more difficult to direct episodes of that, to direct this? And did one experience influence the other at all? Definitely Shining Girls, because it's much, it's a, it's, it's a new show. So you're setting up a new show. You're establishing something new. You're establishing a new story. You're establishing characters. First seasons are always that, you know, first seasons are the hardest ones because you're really, you're setting up a world. You're doing this, this world building. So 
um, you're asking all these questions for the first time, you know, by the time you get to season four and five of a show, it's, it's a living, breathing thing. Um, so definitely shining girls. Um, but I also had so much, like I said, support from Michelle and Dana, the other directors. I didn't, I never felt like I was alone in, in, in directing this show. It felt like it was a very, very collaborative experience. And the three of us felt like we were working together on all of the episodes in a way. I don't think it's too spoilery to say that by the end of these episodes, Kirby is able to fill in some of the gaps and holes in her life and have a bit of a better grasp on what reality is. Is the ending that we see always the ending of the show had, I did that evolve at all or did it always feel like the most satisfying way to end the season? That was always the ending. It was always the ending. It was the ending that was pitched to me like really early on before we started shooting the show. Cause of course I was like, I need to know how it ends because I need to know where I'm going. And um, it was, so that was always the ending. I mean, I think there were certain machinations in how we got there that changed, but that specific actual end of the show was always what it was. I can definitely, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but I, I can say that, you know, um, cause I think the audience deserves to know this, that you, you, she does end up figuring things out. She does end up filling some holes. She does end up being able to answer some of the questions that she has and that the audience has the, the, the surprise and the twists may be that what those answers are and do they fix everything? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. So uh, how do you find a, a character? I mean, it seems that, you know, the characters you play are so fascinating. How do you know when you've found one that you just have to do? I don't know. I really don't know. I, it's an instinctive thing that I can't put my finger on. I think for me, I feel like an intrinsic connection to the character that I can't put into words. There's something about her that I know. There's something about her that I understand. And then the and then the other part of it is just something that I want to see, like a, a show that I want to see, a show that I would want to watch, a story that I would want to watch. Like that for me is, I always figure if I want to watch it, there might be a few other people that do too. And that's it. I, I approach things as, a, as an audience member a lot of the time. Well, I had a great time watching this. I couldn't wait to see how it all ended. So thank you for uh, talking to me about it. You're welcome. Thank you. Good to see you again.